Electronic Brains. That's right, that's what this book is called. It's called Electronic Brains, How Computers Work, a clear and simple explanation of elementary entertaining language of the mathematics mechanism and programming of electronic computers. And this is a hardcover. And uh, this is a book that I got used. This is interesting. Let's read the back because it's kind of going to give you, uh, sorry, I got to smell it first. Just, oh, it smells amazing. Look at that guy. All right, so let me read the back first uh, because it'll give you like um, an idea of what the book is about. And then we're gonna take a closer look at it. So the author of this book is an electronic computer, it says. Does this statement sound impossible to you? It isn't true, but it is possible. And you will understand how it could be done after you have read this book which is as fascinating as any detective story. At first, you may not even under be interested in the subject of computers, but once you begin to read about the tasks they can perform, you will wonder how they work. And you will be able to understand how if you can add two and two and follow a simple diagram. This book is written especially for the non-mathematically minded, in easy, understandable, conversational style. The authors proceed slowly and clearly and do not overwhelm you with technical details. They even predict which sentences very few you will have to read through twice. So let's take a look at it. And this is uh, from the Bishop Kenny Library. I don't know where that is, but it looks like someone took the stamp off. So it's an X or EX library book. Yeah, it's got the stamp there. How Computers Work, Electronic Brains by Rolf Loberg and Theo Lutz. The Oak Tree Press, cool. Let's look at the copyright. How old was this book? Oh, there's other books of interest. Color television, how it works. Wow, so this is from 1965. Wow, really old, right? Introduction, beasts made of wires and switches. Information counted, measured, and mailed. The concise language of the computer. Now, the multiplication is vexation. Yeah, just, uh, it's an old school book on computers. What's this? One function of a computer is the ability to very quickly analyze thousands and thousands of items, classify them, and bring them together, bring together facts and information which often takes a good part of a lifetime under ordinary circumstances. One thing it can do is take all the characteristics of two people and bring them together. These two people, Paul Nelson and Sandra Titus of Michigan State University, were married as a result of the matchmaking computer shown here. So they used a matchmaking computer. Introduction. There are no such things as electronic brains. You probably think that sounds preposterous in a book that avowedly sets out to tell its readers all about electronic brains, but there are in fact no such things. The machines called electronic brains are nothing but electronic calculating machines. This is so primitive, isn't it? Because you know we're in you know, the year we're in now, you know, with artificial intelligence and everything. It's just like this is like oh, computers. You know, they were really excited about just the basic things. Of course, they are devices that almost perform miracles, but only almost. In reality, they cannot work wonders, but merely execute masterly performances of technical precision. Calling them electronic brains is going too far. <laughs> yeah, fun. Yeah, let's just look at some of the pictures in this book, because it does have some, some pictures and things, some interesting things. Just look, let's glance through it. Oh yeah, wow. It's binary, right? Hardcore. What's this? A tape punch. On the left are the tape rollers. In the middle, the punching apparatus for two tapes at a time. On top, the spools which take the punch tape. Huh, a punch reader which can punch cards and read them as well. That's cool. What's this? Card punch goes to the punch sense. It's like a whole system. Here's the electronic computer. Wow. Interesting, right? And today we have cell phones. It's like, <laughs> you know, pretty nuts. But understanding this stuff, I think, is, is interesting and it's cool. You can see, you know, really understanding how things work. about storage. The Zeus Z22, a small and economical electronic computer. 
The original tabulating machine and card sorting box was used in the U.S. Census of 1890. Huh. The first for which facts were compiled and tabulated by mechanical means. That's interesting. These are plug-in units on which the calculating circuits are mounted in a Telefunken computer, TR4. Quite the, quite the interesting book. What's this? This is the control deck of the Siemens 200 computer. There's a cashier, self-service. Oh, oh, look at that. Is that a robot? Automated shopping. Oh, here we go. Yeah, look at this. Let's, let's look at this. Automation has penetrated with electronic computers into the world of shopkeepers, too. We may soon see it at work in some of America's giant self-service stores, supermarkets, and shopping areas. Goods for sale will have tickets attached to them with a printed price and a perforated code. Mrs. Smith, who has just been buying canned goods, takes them to the cash desk. The cashier tears off the punch sections of the tickets and slips them into a, a reading device. Okay. Yeah, they have that at uh, stores now, right? They scan. They scan things now at the store, right? So that, that's funny. The device waits never longer than a few fractions of a second until the great electronic computer in the cellar is free and tells it what is punched into the tickets, the kind of goods and their price. It adds them up and it flashes the number on an illuminated sign telling Mrs. Smith how much she has to pay, right? She hands over the money, the cashier types the total, and immediately afterwards, Mrs. Smith has changed, glides into her expectant palm. A credit card, yeah, yeah, it's cool, cool, right? It's just a really interesting take on things. It's when goods for sale will have tickets attached to them with a printed price and a perforated code. Yeah, then that's, they do have things, right? They have little, it's pretty cool. Really interesting. I'm gonna give it a whiff here, just, ah, oh, incredible. It's kind of like uh, they foresaw the future. I mean, maybe it was common knowledge at this era. I mean, this was, what, what's the copyright on this again? Let's check the copyright. I think it's 19, when was this made? Uh, 1965. This book is probably definitely out of print. Um, if I find any copies, I'll, I'll, I'll try to leave a link in the description by Sterling Publishing Company, Inc. Yeah. Programming on the music box. Hmm. Pretty interesting. Anyways, um, I'll just end this video. If I find it, I'll leave a link in the description. If you're not a subscriber, feel free to hit subscribe. If you want to, and if you want to learn math, uh, I do have courses. They're on Udemy. But if you get them, please use the links from my videos or from my website, mathsorcerer.com. Until next time, as always, keep doing mathematics.